Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and everybody praise the Lord. Welcome to In Heavenly Places with yours truly, Elder Marcus Brantley, and I am glad you have chosen this opportunity, this time to tune in to hear a word from the Lord. As I always say and ask, I hope that your uh, Sunday was blessed uh, wherever you decided to worship, whether it was virtually or in person. Hopefully it was in person. Amen. And I hope that uh, God uh, showered his blessings upon you and those that uh, were there worshiping with you. We are going um, into one passage of scripture, uh, which is going to be found in the book of Psalms. That's the book of Psalms, and we will be looking at Psalm 136. That's the 136th Psalm in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I don't know about you, but um, it's been pretty hot here in Arizona. Now, typically it does get hot, and uh, that's no secret or uh, an abnormality, but uh, we've been experiencing quite a, a heat wave uh, where it's been in the triple digits and at times in the teens. And I believe one day this week it may go as high as 118. Amen. That's the time where you would uh, clean the sidewalk and then bring a cart of eggs where you can just scramble an omelet uh, on the sidewalk. Amen. Without a frying pan and cooking oil. You just need a spatula just to flip them. Stir and flip. Amen. But um, of course, I'm only kidding, but uh, it is hot enough to do that if you're daring enough. Uh, but um, at any event, we do endeavor to stay uh, cool uh, because it can be a dangerous time. And for those that are living in states where uh, it's very hot, um, I advise you to stay sheltered in place uh, make sure that your air is working, whether it's an air conditioner or a fan, a man or a cooler. Back when in the uh, days when I was young, we didn't have an air conditioner. We had a cooler. Amen. And that's what you would plug in and pour water in. And that would blow out uh, cool air. Amen. Back in those days. But we thank God, amen, for uh, his many blessings he's bestowed upon uh, us over the years, amen, to the point where uh, uh, we're thankful. And that is uh, going to be uh, part of our message on tonight. It's about being thankful. But let's go right into our scripture. Uh, again, Psalm 136. And I'm just going to read the first three verses. Uh, and it reads, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we praise you. Lord, we magnify your name. We thank you. For truly your mercy endureth forever. You are God and God alone. There is none like you. Oh God, you are supreme. You are the eternal king, the invisible God. You are the El Shaddai. Oh God, you are El Elyon. And we worship you on tonight. We acknowledge your sovereignty and power. And Father, we ask that you cover us under your blood, oh, by the Son of your, Je your Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God, hide us behind the cross of Calvary. Oh, God, have your way on tonight. Lord, open your words to us, Lord, that we may have understanding. You said in all thy getting, get understanding. Oh, God, we endeavor, Lord, to hear a word from you on tonight. Bless as only you can. Anoint your manservant in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit move through cyberspace. Oh God, even through this platform, Facebook Live, touch each and every hearer in the name of Jesus. Touch someone's body, those that may be sick, oh God. Give joy to those that are depressed, Father. Oh God, loose the shackles of those that may be bound. Destroy every yoke 
bind the forces of evil. In the name of Jesus, oh God, let us leave this platform giving you glory and praise for you are truly worthy. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, well, God bless you again. Um, we're looking at Psalm 136. And verse 1 reads, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And my thought on this evening is, Mercy, Jesus, for your mercy. Mercy, Jesus, for your mercy. Now, we're reading uh, the scripture uh, coming from Psalm 136, and I believe I've mentioned the little background on the book of Psalm because it's one of the most quoted books uh, aside from uh, the Gospels. The book of Psalms is quoted uh, quite often. Even Jesus himself quoted from the Psalms, and that gave the book of Psalms, its legitimacy as a inspired book in our canon. Now, all of our 66 books are inspired, but when Jesus mentions it, it even has even more uh, weight and authenticity. So uh, here, Psalm uh, is divided into five divisions. Uh, Psalms has five divisions, and there are numerous writers. Sometimes we mistakenly believe that David, the king, King David, uh, wrote all of the Psalms, and that is not the case. Uh, there were several Psalm writers. Now, David wrote a majority of the Psalms. As a matter of fact, David is credited with 73 Psalm 73 out of the 150, which is almost half of the Psalms. And that's why when we read the Psalms, we have a tendency uh, to ascribe the Psalm to his authorship. Now, of, out of those 73 of the 150, they directly indicate that David wrote those Psalms. Now, there are about uh, 17 or so Psalms that are unnamed. And like Psalm 136 that's unnamed, uh, we ascribe uh, and attribute this particular psalm to David the way it's written and the way that he's invoking praise. So he may have uh, exceeded uh, half of the psalms if those other unnamed psalms uh, belong under his authorship. But it's in five divisions, and the reason why it's in five divisions is that when you look at the five bodies of uh, psalms, they end in what we call a type of benediction. So in other words, uh, we see the first uh, psalm and the 150th, or rather the first two chapters of the psalm, and then the last two chapters are not necessarily in the divisions because those are kind of like bookends. Um, those are like an introduction and a conclusion uh, to the psalms. But when we look at the other 146 psalms, those are divided into five divisions, and each division ends in a type of benediction. Uh, for instance, the first division uh, is from Psalm 3 through 41. And the second division of the book of Psalms is from Psalm 42 through 72. And then the third division is Psalm 73 through 89. The fourth division from Psalm 90 through 106 and then the fifth division from Psalm 107 to uh, 145. And then from 146 through 150, those four Psalms, and then the two beginning Psalms, those actually are the bookends. Amen. And at each of the divisions, as I mentioned, is a type of benediction which reads, May the Lord God of Israel be blessed forever. Amen. So when we see that benediction, 
that is where it ends, the, the division, first division, and the second division begins. And then at the end of the second division, you will see a similar type of benediction. And that's how the book of Psalms is divided into those five divisions. Now, I think I may have taught on this previously. So for those that uh, may have heard me talk about how Psalms uh, is divided and the authorship ascribed to not just David, but to others. Bear with us. Amen. Um, there may be some for the first time that um, are hearing this. Amen. For uh, the first time. And as a result, this would be uh, beneficial. So we see that not just David, but for instance, Asaph uh, was uh, one of the writers of the Psalms. And Asaph was a singer. He was a Levite, and he was appointed by David, uh, who had other musicians and, and singers. As a matter of fact, David was a psalmist himself. He was a singer himself and a musician. So he knew who to appoint, amen, when it came to ministering to God in the tabernacle. And he appointed those that were gifted, Amen. And that had the anointing of God in their lives. Because when you're ministering before the Lord, amen. Yes, I know we have choirs and we have praise teams. But the primary purpose of ministering in music is to give God the praise. Amen. Yes, I know music has other uh, impactful purposes. It blesses the soul of uh, every believer, and even for those that aren't saved, they're blessed. But the primary purpose, amen, of ministering in song is to give God his glory and to give God his praise. That is the primary purpose. But when we look at music today, music's primary purpose is to make money. Oh, y'all not saying anything. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, sometimes we don't even know if we're listening to gospel music because the lines have been blurred. So and you got folks singing uh, gospel in, on one track and they're doing R&B on another track. Sometimes the gospel music sound like house music. And I just got to turn off uh, my uh, XM uh, radio. Amen. Because of the things that are being played. Oh, glory be to God. But music was uh, given uh, to give God glory. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, some would even say that when Lucifer was created, before he fell, he was the cherubim that covereth. And the Bible says that he had pipes in his garment. Amen. And I'm sure having pipes like organ playing, uh, there would be music in his movements, amen, giving God the glory and giving him the praise. So not only with the music playing from Lucifer's pipes, but also the cacophony of the praise coming for the four living creatures that are before the throne that is spoken of in the book of Revelation, where they cry, holy, holy, Lord God almighty. Imagine that, these four living creatures, these cherubims just giving God praise, and at the same time, music coming out of the pipes, amen, of the angel that covereth. But because he got lifted up in pride, the Bible says that Lucifer otherwise known now as Satan, was cast out of heaven as lightning. So getting back to David making these appointments, he appointed Asaph, who was a musician. Amen. And Asaph um, was a Levite. Now, remember, all priests are not, um, uh, all priests are Levites, but all Levites are not priests. Amen. But when you ministered in the house of God, in the tabernacle, before the time of the temple, and even from the temple on, there were Levites that uh, were in the tabernacle or the temple ministering in the house of God. Because the priesthood ministered in the holy place and the holies of holies. Uh, can I take my time? Can, can I preach like I teach? 
Amen. Just bear with me. We'll, we'll, we'll get revved up after a while. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. So here um, uh, you have Levites that are ministering in the tabernacle and in the temple. Uh, there, there were porters, those that were responsible for the upkeep. Um, during the tabernacle, when they were in the wilderness, there were needed Levites that had to break down the tabernacle uh, when they decided to move in the camp, when God gave the order. Amen. By pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. When the cloud lifted up, it was a signal for them to move. And the Levites were all the only ones that were sanctioned or authorized uh, to minister and uh, be the ones engaged in the transportation of the vessels and uh, the curtains and, and all of the other uh, spoons and other vessels uh, of the tabernacle. But they were not necessarily in the priesthood, right? Because those were Aaron's and his sons. But the other Levites that served, and that's why Jesus, when you look at his parable of the Good Samaritan, he mentioned that a Levite passed by the injured man and also a priest to let us know that the Levite and the priest were distinct, although both were from Levi. Uh, it's just that the priest was a descendant from Aaron. And that the Levite was a descendant from Levi in the general sense and still had a role in the ministry of the tabernacle. Now, I don't want to dwell on that because I'll get off track and we'll go into a message, amen, of the tabernacle. And maybe we'll save that for another opportunity. But amen. So here, um, Asaph was... From Levi, he was a Levite, he was a musician, and David appointed Asaph, a man, to minister in the tabernacle. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And he uh, wrote some of the Psalms. Now, Asaph was attributed to 12 of the 150 Psalms, and his name is written in the title. When you see Asaph, uh, you will see that it was him that wrote the song. Then there were a couple of others by the name of Heman and Ethan. They were also appointed Levites in the tabernacle, and they wrote a psalm of peace. And then you had the sons of Korah. Now, you know who Korah was. Korah was a Levite, a descendant from Levite, during the time of Moses. But he rebelled. Amen. Because he felt that Aaron and Moses was taking too much upon themselves. In other words, he was jealous and envious of the fact that it was Aaron and his sons that had the opportunity to wear, amen, the breastplate and the ephod and the mitre. Amen. And, and all of the other priestly garments because the high priestly garments were beautiful. Amen. And sometimes we can get caught up in our garments. Amen. Because we see a preacher wearing a garment, a robe, fancy robe, we all of a sudden want to be called to be preachers. But preaching the gospel, <laughs> hallelujah, is more than just wearing a robe. Preaching the gospel uh, is more than just wearing a chain with a cross around your neck. Being a missionary is more than just wearing a dress down to your ankles. Hallelujah. But it's about service in the kingdom of God. It's about winning souls. Amen. It's about warring with principalities and powers. Oh, the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. It may be a fancy robe to you, but there's suffering in that garment. Oh, there's a lot of tears in that garment. There's a lot of fasting in that garment. Oh, glory be to God. And just because you see a man, a preacher, wearing a nice robe shouldn't, amen, have you to want to desire that office. Because no one calls themselves into the office unless God calls them. As Aaron was called into the priesthood. Amen. So here, Shama, we see that 
um, Korah had rebelled because he wanted to wear the priestly garment. And quickly, I, I, I'm going to just mention that God was angry with Korah and some of the other elders because they were feuding with Moses and with Aaron. And God told Moses, I want you to get 12 rods, amen. And I want you to set them before the tabernacle. And whose rod I touch, that is the one who I designated to be my priests forever. Amen. And here, uh, God touched Aaron's rod. And the Bible said it blossomed. Amen. And it brought forth almonds. Oh, hallelujah. Here, God can touch an inanimate object. Oh, hallelujah. And make it blossom and bring forth fruit. Oh, he can touch your body. Come on, somebody. If he can touch a stick and make it bring forth fruit like it's alive, he can touch your body. He can heal you, amen, from any infirmity. Oh, hallelujah. He can make your crooked straight. He can make your high places come down. He can exalt your valley. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. God can do the impossible. Amen. And if he can do it for a stick, he can do it for a child of God. Because you're part of a royal priesthood. Amen. You're not from Aaron's line, but you're from the line of the order of Melchizedek, priest of the Most High God, who was Jesus Christ who made Abraham. All met Abraham in the valley of the kings, amen, the dale of the kings, oh, hallelujah, in the book of Genesis. Peter said, we are the holy nation, we are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, amen, who is to show forth the praises of God, who has brought us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So here, Korah, his sons, even despite his father's rebellion, God still allowed, amen, him and his, rather his sons to be appointed in the tabernacle of God. And as a result, the sons of Korah, they wrote 11 of the Psalms to let us know it doesn't matter who your grandfather was or who your father was, amen. If God has anointed you, for a purpose, then you need to walk into your purpose. If he called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, then you need to be a witness in God's kingdom, giving him the praise and giving him the glory. So here we see that you have multiple writers, even Solomon and Moses, between those two, wrote three Psalms. Amen. And then, as I mentioned, there are 17 unnamed ones, just like in our text. And in our text in Psalm 136, it starts off, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Why? For his mercy endureth forever. Now, our subject on tonight is mercy, Jesus, for your mercy. Now, mercy Amen is not mercy, but mercy is a French word for thank you. So in essence, thank you. Uh, the message is thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Amen. So mercy, meaning thank you, is the French word, amen, for thank you. And it makes a connection between gratitude and the very concept of mercy. Amen. Because if you receive mercy, you ought to say thank you. Hallelujah. So the French, amen, tied gratitude with the receipt of mercy. Hallelujah. So when you receive mercy, amen, you ought to say thank you. You ought to be, amen, grateful Amen. For that mercy. Now, in Spanish, the word thank you is gracias. Amen. And in Italian, it's gracie. Oh, hallelujah. Now, they are making the connection 
went thank you with grace. Hallelujah. So when they say gracias, they are saying thank you because they are associating it with someone being gracious. Hallelujah. And so are the Italians with grassi. They are being thankful, amen, because of the person graciousness. Because if somebody shows you grace, then you ought to respond by saying thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> hallelujah. Now, mercy and grace are sometimes interchangeable. Hallelujah. But they don't necessarily mean the same thing. Now, mercy is a broader category of being rewarded something. Hallelujah. Grace is a type of mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Holy Ghost, help me to unpack this. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So when we think of mercy, we often think of a courtroom. A man standing before a judge. And sometimes when you uh, stand there, are those defendants, some are innocent and some are guilty. And the ones that are guilty, they realize that they are guilty. And then you got some that will just lie through their teeth and say, Your Honor, I didn't do it. Yes, you did. I told them I see you. And you need to fess up like you did. Amen. Don't be like your ancestor, ancestor Adam, that when God asked him, why, who told you that you were naked? Instead of him fessing and saying, I listened to the devil. Amen. And he caused thee to sin against you, Lord. He then blamed God and said, Lord, the woman you gave me, amen. She, amen, was the one that told me that I was naked. She was the one that told me to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. If you're guilty, then you need to confess it. Amen. The Bible says we confess our faults unto God, that he is gracious. Amen. Uh, to forgive us of our sins and all of our unrighteousness. Oh, geez, God told Israel, come, let us reason together. Amen. Though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them like wool. And although your sins be as crimson, I will make them white as snow. Oh, God wants us to come to the table. Amen. Just like in the days of the priesthood, where there was a table of showbread. Hallelujah, where the priests would have fellowship and supper with God, a portion of the sacrifice, amen, because God wants fellowship, but he wants honesty. That's why Jesus said the true worshipers know that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the first thing, after you give God his glory on your knees, you need to confess your sins. That's why the Our Father's Prayer given by Jesus is a model prayer because it starts off by giving God his glory by acknowledging that he's our heavenly father and that his name is blessed. But as you go into the prayer, it says, Lord, forgive us our debts. Forgive us our transgressions as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, I'm guilty. Amen. And even I, though I may not have committed a, a, a overt act, there are some covert acts. Amen. Those kind of acts that, amen, are in our minds. Amen. Thoughts that we think. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're not saved 24-7. Amen. And sometimes you got to rebuke those thoughts and plead the blood of Jesus because the devil will come in and try to hijack your mind. They, the devil will be a terrorist. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, stand, having done all to stand. Stand, therefore. Amen. Taking on the whole arm of God. 
putting on the helmet of salvation or allow your salvation in God, amen, to protect your mind, amen, gird up the loins of your mind, amen, so that the devil don't allow a terror, allow you to be bombarded with his sin terrorism, oh, hallelujah, but you got to admit to God these things and say, Lord, forgive me if I thought anything, forgive me if I was neglectful, forgive me, oh God, because he's the judge of all the earth. And he already knows, amen, the ending at the beginning. He already knows what you've been through. He's already known what you've done. And he already knew what Adam and Eve did. Because God walked in the garden in the cool of the day. Because God is a spirit and he's omnipresent. Amen. Ezekiel saw his chariot. Where there was a wheel in the middle of a wheel. And the wheels were beside the four cherubims. And all the wheels had eyes round about it. And those eyes saw wherever the cherubims were facing. Because they had four faces. Amen. One pointed to the north. Another to the south. Another to the east. And another to the west. And wherever the faces were. Amen. The chariot flashed. Amen. In and out like lightning. And there were eyes, which meant that God's eyes all all over the place. And especially upon his people. That's why the Bible says that judgment begins where? At the house of the Lord. So when you stand before God, you need to come humbly. You need to ask him and say, Lord, I stand guilty. And I speak. But I submit myself and throw myself on the mercy of the court. Oh, hallelujah. Mercy, Jesus, for your mercy. So when the defendant throws themselves on the mercy of the court, they are in essence putting their lives in the hands of the judge. And they're asking for the judge to have compassion in their heart. And if the judge can find compassion, if God can soften his heart, he will then allow, amen, a lighter sentence than you would otherwise be if there was no mercy. So in other words, in order, in, 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 rather than you getting a sentence of 20 years, in the judge's mercy, you may get five years. Or instead of getting five years, in the judge's mercy, you may get a year. Or instead of getting a year in jail, you may get, amen, probation where there is no jail. Amen. But all of it comes from the mercy of the judge. In other words, you're guilty, but the compassion and the graciousness of the judge is allowing you to have a lenient, uh, a leaner sentence. He is showing leniency and therefore mercy. So in other words, mercy says you are guilty. Amen. But I'm going to let you, amen, not do the full meat of the sentence. Now grace comes out of mercy, but it's a different creature. Hallelujah, because what grace does, grace recognizes, amen, that the person is guilty, amen, we were all guilty, hallelujah, amen, but the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then John also said in John chapter 1 that the law came by Moses. Amen. And the law was harsh. Paul says it was a schoolmaster. And the law came by Moses. There was a lot of sentences in the Old Testament by death. Achan, who took the spoils of the enemy camp, brought trouble in the camp. And as a result, him and his family had to be killed 
as a result of their penalty. So the law was harsh. Amen. But the Bible says that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth by Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. In other words, the law says you're worthy of death, but Jesus is not on the scene. And he says, I'll take the penalty onto myself. Oh, hallelujah. Not only do they not serve time, not only do they not get the death penalty, but I'm letting them off scot-free. And the only thing they're required to do is say mercy, which means thank you. All that they're required to do is say, Lord, I praise you. Now, all they're required to do, um, now, when they say that they're guilty, um, now, and they repent of their sins, um, now, having a godly sorrow, um, now, that work of repentance, um, now, unto salvation, um, now, all they got to do um, now, is say glory, um, now, hallelujah, um, now, oh glory, um, now, be to the most high God. Um, nah. So here grace um, nah, is not a penalty. Um, nah, but the penalty is lifted. Um, nah, and Jesus exchanges um, nah, your righteousness. Um, nah, or rather your unrighteousness. Um, nah, for his righteousness. Um, nah, God does a switch. Um, nah, and he takes the penalty of death. Um, nah, that was sentence them not in your life now and Jesus said I'll take on that death penalty now and I'll nail it to the cross now some of you now you were murderers now you were thieves now drug addicts now alcoholics now backbiters now adulterers now whoremongers now Idolaters, now gamblers, now heady and high minded, now that you were worthy of death, now but Jesus, now came out of eternity, now stepped into time, now and said, I come, now to endure the cross, now I come. Now, to despise the shame, um, now, and I'm going to be nailed, um, now, and with every nail, um, now, I'm taking your sin away, um, now, that's why someone sung the, sang the song, um, now, he took my sins away, um, now, he took um, now, my sins away, um, now, Thank you, Jesus. Now, mercy, Jesus. Now, for your mercy. Now, oh, for your grace. Now, for grace comes out of mercy. Now, when you have a loan. Now, and you're ready to default on your mortgage. Now, they're coming to take your house. Now, oh, hallelujah. Now, but somewhere. Now, in your terms and conditions, um, now, there's a cause of grace um, now, that says, um, now, even if you miss a payment, um, now, if you can make it up the next month, um, now, you have grace. Um, now, there is no default. Um, now, there is no repossession. Um, now, there is no foreclosure. Um, now, oh, hallelujah. Um, now, and even if there is no terms and conditions, um, now, when it came to your life, um, now, Jesus paid it all. Um, now, he paid it at the beginning, um, now, before the dry land appeared. Um, now, for the Bible says, um, now, the lamb, um, now, the lamb, um, now, Jesus the lamb, um, now, was slain. Um, now, before the foundation of the world, um, now, he took your sins away, um, now, before you were born, um, now, before you were thought, um, now, in your parents' mind, um, now, he gave you grace, um, now, out of his mercy, um, now, mercy, Jesus, um, now, for your mercy, um, now, thank you, Lord, um, now, I praise you, um, now, all the days of my life, um, now, that's why David said, um, now, who oh, give thanks um, now, unto the Lord, um, now, for he is good, um, now, for his mercy.
mercy. He's good. For his mercy. Do I have a witness? God is a good God. God is a mighty good God. Good. So good. So good. So good. He woke you up this morning. Now, started you on your way. Now, put food on your table. Now, clothes on your back. Now, saved your children. Now, saved your husband. Now, saved your wife. Now, gave you a job. Now, gave you the Holy Ghost. Now, speaking in other tongues. Now, as the Spirit gives the utterance. Now, don't sit on God. Now, but tell him mercy, Jesus. Now, for your mercy. Now, David continued. Now, oh, give thanks now, unto the Lord. Now, for he is good. Now, for his mercy endureth. Now, forever. Now, oh, give thanks now, unto the God. Now, oh, God. Now, for his mercy. Now, Endure forever. Now, nobody like God. Now, he's too high. Now, you can't get over him. Now, so wide. Now, can't get around him. Now, so low. Now, you can't get under him. Now, the better come at the door. Now, Jesus. Now, God manifested in the flesh. Now, said, I am the door. Now, and if you come in the other way, now, you come as a thief and a robber, now, to kill, steal, and destroy, now, and if you're gonna come through the door, now, Jesus said, be born again, now, born of the water, now, and of the spirit, now, Peter said, now, repent, now, be baptized, now, in the name of Jesus Christ, now, for the remission of sins, now, and ye shall, now, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, now, for the promise, now, God promised, now, and when he gives you the Holy Ghost, now, he's fulfilled his promise, now, but it just doesn't stop with you, now, but the promise goes on, now, into the next generation. Now, so not only should I say mercy, Jesus, now, for giving me the Holy Ghost, now, mercy, Jesus, now, for saving my family, now, mercy, Jesus, now, for saving my grandchildren, now, mercy, Jesus, now, mercy, 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 now, you're worthy of the glory, now, you're worthy of the praise, now, then David shed. Now, give thanks to the Lord of Lords now, for his mercy now, endure forever. Now, not only is he supreme God, now, he's supreme Lord. Now, Lord over all lords. Now, you got landlords. Now, your God is Lord over him. Now, when you don't get your rent, now, and you don't have the money to pay it, now, don't look for your landlord now to give you mercy. Now look to the Lord of the landlord. Now ask him for mercy. Now see if a check won't show up. Now see if a saint won't put money now in your hand. Now do I have a witness? Now the Lord of Lords now will provide. Now he is Jehovah Jireh. Now the God that provides him. Now you got to call on him. Now and when you call on him, now he'll bless you. Now bless shall you be. Now if you're going out, now bless you gonna be. Now in your coming in, now the Lord is gonna make you the head. Now and not the tail. Now make you a lender. Now and not a borrower. Now. But when he do these things, now, you got to say mercy, Jesus, now, mercy, now, mercy, Jesus, now, for making a way out of nowhere, now, 
mercy, Jesus, for open a door that was shut, shut a door that was closed, mercy, Jesus, for healing my body, getting rid of my cancer, my high blood pressure, healing me from my diabetes, mercy, Jesus, for getting that demon, out of my way. Mercy, Jesus, for the promotion you gave me. You're a good God. You're a wonderful God. But David said to him who alone doeth great wonders for his mercy endure forever. He's a God of wonders. He's a wonderful God. Isaiah said, he's wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, glory be to God, come on and praise him, come on and magnify him, you're no longer under the law, but you're now in grace, you're in the liberty of Christ. Now, you ought to praise him. Now, praise his wonderful name. Now, you would have been judged now, and sent to hell. Now, that alone now, is enough to say mercy. Now, Jesus, now, for your mercy endureth now, forever. Now, come on and shout hallelujah. Now, come on and shout glory. Now, show the Lord your thankful. Now, show the Lord you're grateful. Now, show the Lord. Now, his mercy endure forever. Now, if you don't praise him. Now, Jesus said the rocks now, will cry out. Now, and I don't know about you. Now, I ain't gonna let him. Now, no rock cry out. Now, well, you say, Brother Bradley, now, how's a rock gonna cry out? Now, well, if a donkey now, spoke to a prophet, now, for the spirit was on the donkey, now, and the donkey began to speak, now, because the donkey's language now, is hee-haw. Now, hee-haw. Now, stop hee-hawing. Now, and say hallelujah. Now, stop hee-hawing. Now, and tell him thank you. Now, stop hee-hawing. Now, and say glory to the God. Now, stop hee-hawing. Now, and say Lord. Now, your mercy endure forever. Now, and if he can make a donkey speak. Now, then his spirit. Now, can make a rock cry out. Now, if he can make a rod. Now, a stick. Now, bring forth almonds. Now, and blossom. Now, he can make a rock. Now, cry out. Now, holy. Now, holy. Now, Lord God Almighty. Now, I'm not going to wait. Now, until the battle is over. Now, I'm not going to wait. Now, until my blessing come down. Now, but I'm going to shout right now. Now, I'm going to put a down payment on it. Now, in advance praise. Now, I'm going to give a praise now. Now, well, I still got breath. Now, David said, if everybody now, that has breath, now, praise ye the Lord. Now, praise the Lord. Now, praise the Lord. Now, in this sanctuary. Now, praise him. Now, in the firmament of his power. Now, praise him. Now, for his excellent greatness. Now, praise him. Now, with his mighty acts. Now, praise him. Now, with the sound of the trumpet. Now, praise him. Now, with the sultry and harp. Now, praise him. Now, with the timbrel and dance. Now, praise him. Now, with the string instruments and organs. Now, let everything. Now, everything. Now, let everything. Now, let, 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 let everything. Now, praise ye the Lord. Now, let everything. Now, that had breath. Now, praise.
praise ye the Lord. Now, come on and shout hallelujah. Now, come on and give him the praise right now. Now, shout glory. Now, shout hallelujah. Now, mercy, Jesus. Now, mercy, Jesus. Now, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. Hey. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not going to let a rock. Hallelujah. Cry for me. But I'm going to tell the Lord, thank you. Mercy. Jesus, for your mercy. See, the French got it right. When they used mercy for the phrase, thank you. Because they tied in gratefulness and gratitude with the dispensation of mercy. Hallelujah. Because mercy is a reward to a guilty party. Grace is God's unmerited favor toward undeserving man, which means both man and woman. You are guilty, but Jesus gave his grace. And John said he even gave grace for grace because while he came with the dispensation of grace, he has given us grace in the dispensation of grace. Hallelujah. This is the acceptable year of the law. This is the year of grace. Hallelujah. And in the year of grace, you can receive grace. Hallelujah. And not just the grace that he provided by going to the cross, but grace going forward until the redemption of our bodies, hallelujah. Until we shed this corruption and shed this mortality, ha, hallelujah. He will continue to give us grace, hallelujah. Oh, mercy, Jesus, for your mercy. Come on and give God the praise, <laughs> hallelujah. God bless you. We thank God for another message. I pray that you were blessed and edified. Hallelujah. And if you were, I need you to share this message. Hit that share button. Also hit the like button too now. Amen. So that others will know that the message was a blessing. And then not only know through the like, but Watch it because you shared it so that someone can be set free and give God his praise because God is worthy of all the praise, the glory, and honor. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we thank you. We praise you. We, Lord, say mercy, Jesus, for your mercy, even for your grace that you have given us. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us. We thank you how you provide for us. We thank you for being God of gods, Lord of lords, King of kings. We thank you for being the master of the sea that hear our despairing cries. We thank you for the love that you've lifted us with. We thank you, Lord, for the comforter that comforts us. Lord, you've been good to us down through the years, and we just want to say thank you. We want to show our gratefulness, our appreciation for all you've done in our lives, even in our families. We thank you for the work that you are doing, that you have done and will do. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, bless each and every hearer of this message. Father, bless as we leave this platform, but not from your presence. Continue to grant us grace. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Well, God bless you. And if you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name and repented of your sins, that's the formula. 
If you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, put your name uh, and contact information, where you are, what city, what state, and I'll link you up with a church that will baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ and that will work with you. Amen. Uh, for godly sorrow that worketh repentance unto salvation so that you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And if you're in Arizona, I'll baptize you myself. I'm not kidding. But if you put it there that you from Arizona, we'll meet up and I'll baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And work with you to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right. God willing, we'll see you on next Sunday with another message in heavenly places with Elder Marcus Brantley. Shalom. Shalom. Be blessed. Oh, hallelujah. Mercy, Jesus, for your mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs>